Welcome back to the program. Before I play a couple of Obama clips from his Planned Parenthood speech, I'd like to set the stage for you and encourage you to remember that Obama and Biden and the others, they could never have accomplished what they are doing without the treachery of Republican leaders who say they're pro-life. In the introductory speech to Obama that Cecil Richards gave, she's the president of Planned Parenthood, she made this comment. Listen and learn. Speaker John Boehner made an emergency trip to the Oval Office uh, to tell the president what he needed to get this budget uh, through Congress. And what was his demand? Was to defund Planned Parenthood and cut millions of women off of life-saving preventive health care. And without missing a beat, in the Oval Office, President Obama responded, nope, zero. And Speaker Boehner tried again, and the President told him, John, it's not going to happen. And that's what it means to have a President who stands with women. She's dead on. She's dead on. That is exactly what happened. Obama and Boehner. Boehner who had promised to defund Planned Parenthood. Obama and Boehner face to face in a room and it's not Obama who blinks, it's Boehner. This would not even be a debate right now if Boehner, who controls the purse strings, all right, the House of Representatives controls the purse strings of the federal budget. If Boehner had been the one who said, then fine, we're not going forward because we're done using American taxpayers' money to murder babies. Remember this face, ladies and gentlemen, the face of John Boehner. This is the face of an accessory to murder. All right, let's hear from President Obama. Uh, Lane, please play that first clip. That women should be allowed to make their own decisions about their own health. It's a simple principle. Friend, killing babies is not health care. It's not health care. This is, a, this is a, a euphemism, okay? It's, it's empty rhetoric designed to hide the horrific truth. Like Nazis saying, we're dealing with the Jewish question. Or slaveholders saying, we're talking about our personal chattel property. Okay? It's rhetoric designed to hide the truth. This is why it is so critical that you and I repeatedly say child killing and murder. All right, next clip, clip please. Somewhere there's a young woman starting a career who, because of you, is able to decide for herself when she wants to start a family. So why do women want to kill their babies? There's a lot of pressure on them, many of them, a lot of pressure. It's still wrong. And here's Obama saying, well, of course a woman wants to kill her child because she gets a better job. So she's using the blood of her own child as the mortar for the bricks of the life that she is building. And it's not worth it because of the guilt, of the trauma, of the horror that will stay with her for the rest of her life. Play the next clip, please. So when politicians try to turn Planned Parenthood into a punching bag, they're not just talking about you, they're talking about the millions of women who you, uh, who you serve. Planned Parenthood deserves to be punched, okay? They deserve to rot on the ash heap of history. Now, I will agree with Obama on one point, and that is that the religious right, national right to life, the Republican machinery often uses Planned Parenthood in their rhetoric for fundraising purposes for votes, to get volunteers. They don't have any real intention of crushing Planned Parenthood underfoot, of sending them back to hell where they came from, at least their vision, and Margaret Sanger, the founder. She was a demon-possessed whore, okay? And I mean that with biblical precision, where the Bible talks about whores and whoredoms and harlots. She was that. They are not just a punching bag. They should be much more. They should be public enemy number one. And we have to have the courage to say so, no matter what. I've got to take a break when we come back, more of Obama's 
sound bites from his demonic speech to Planned Parenthood. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, the end of that speech will make the hair stand up on the back of your neck if you love God. Don't go away.